Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer, and today I'm just going to try some stuff out. Uh, I went ahead, got myself a webcam, and I want to see how this comes out, and what you guys think about, uh, you know, doing this particular type of format. This seems to be one of the things that you guys liked. I also uh, went ahead and put up a demo intro. Let me know what you guys think of that in the comments below. We're still kind of working on some stuff and trying to work things out, but I figured I'd show you guys where we're at and kind of get your feedback and see, you know what you think so if it's working we'll stick with it and make changes as necessary so what I really wanted to do today was go ahead and let you guys know what's been going on with me I've been doing a lot of tinkering and a lot of thinking on pretty much all the retro stuff out there basically I got the idea I was gonna do a yearly build like uh, the best PC from 1996 and then move forward you know do 97 98 and so on and it seems like that wasn't really the smartest of ideas there because it's just very incremental increases in certain years. There really nothing happened. 1997 really stands out. There's really not too much of note besides Quake 2 coming out, which is cool. But there wasn't really any hardware upgrades to, you know, make any real difference there. So anyway, I was thinking, how about let's try to build the most powerful Windows 98 PC. Uh, as that is, you know, one of the big retro operating systems. Windows 98 SE, if you're wanting to play older DOS-based games and obviously late 1990s games, that's going to work very well for you guys as it does both. And I got to tinkering a lot and uh, I went ahead and put Windows XP on there. I was kind of curious to see how XP held up, you know, trying to run these older games. And I was actually very surprised. And I kind of got to the point where I was debating whether or not Windows 98 or XP was actually ideal for a retro build. And uh, if you ask me right now, I would say probably building a Windows XP system is smarter. And for really old DOS games, you're actually probably better off using DOSBox. But I came across a lot of information. I've been working on this for a few weeks, even before we kind of thought about taking a hiatus and, and heading out. Um, I, I was already starting on this. And I've come across some interesting information that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. Uh, first thing that I want to do is just kind of go over the debate. The, the internal debate that you have to have because you can't do everything. There's just no way to make a complete retro system that'll run everything. Um, my, my initial goal was to see if I can get something that actually would run Windows 98 SE, XP, and Windows 10. Can't be done, not efficiently anyway or not the way that you would want windows 10 to be run uh, in fact even running a windows 98 and xp machine is really kind of hard making a hybrid machine there is kind of tough uh, but at the same time you don't want 20 computers running around your house just so you can run some older games so you really kind of have to decide yourself what it is that you're trying to do me personally, I actually have a Windows uh, 98 slash XP hybrid next to me, and it does pretty well. But uh, here, I wanted to show you guys these motherboards that'll kind of get you started, as these are the best motherboards that you can get for specific categories. So let me go ahead and show you these now. Alrighty, guys, so one of the big things is we're going to have to jump on eBay here to find most of these parts. Okay, um, so let's say you're wanting to build a Windows 98 system solely a Windows 98 system, you can pretty much do anything that's a Pentium 3 or older. You don't really have to worry about it. Now, if you want the high end, you want to build the beast of Windows 98 machines, there are a couple different ways you can go here. Okay, so this motherboard from Gigabyte, there are other manufacturers that'll have them. I just personally think that these are the best that I could find anyway. But basically, you need a, an LGA 775 version with a with the Intel 865 chipset on there. And what this gets you is you have your AGP3 slot. So this does not work with older Voodoo cards. So it's not too good for that. However, you could get them in the PCI versions. But this will support up to Core 2 Extremes on the website. And people have actually put in their QX6700 quad cores on here. So you can actually go ahead and run Windows 98 with a freaking quad core core 2. Uh, that's pretty nuts. You can check by going over to drivers and this is the big thing you have to make sure whatever motherboard you're looking at go under the drivers and see if they're there. You only see the INF for the Intel and that's a little weird but if you go to Windows 98 
Oh, well, now you have the audio driver, as that will work as well. And then you can go over to Windows ME, and poof, there's all your drivers. Might take a little tinkering, but they're there, so you can go ahead and get those working. Now, let's say you wanted to try something a little bit different. You wanted to go ahead and uh, push a little bit further on your uh, Windows 98 system. Then you can go over to this motherboard here. This is the uh, KT890 chipset on this one, the Zavia chipset. And what this one will allow you to do is this has uh, 939, so you can put an Athlon X2 in here, but it has PCI Express. This is the only motherboard that I could find that supports PCI Express and Windows 98. Once again, go over to the uh, drivers and check, and you have, boom, all your drivers are available in here. So you can get that up and running nicely without too much of a hassle. Okay, guys, and then your final option is if you do want compatibility with Voodoo cards and, uh, you know, AGP 2 times cards that are 3.3 uh, volt AGP, you can go with this motherboard here. This will be the most powerful chipset that you can go with. This is the SIS uh, 651 chipset. And as you can see, it does have a universal AGP port. What that means is you can use either newer AGP cards that are 1.5 volt. That's kind of like your high-end AGP cards. Your older AGP cards like the Voodoo 3s uh, and your Voodoo 5s. Now, granted, only really the 3DFX cards are only available in uh, you know these older formats. And that's really the reason why you're going to go ahead and need this. Now, like I said, you can get Voodoo cards in PCI, but they're extremely, extremely hard to find and very, very expensive. So if you want to go a little bit more cost effective, but want to build a 3DFX system, this motherboard is going to be the way to go. So once again, it is uh, this particular one is made by Asus. It's the P4S 533. And then there's a couple different suffixes at the end. So I would just search by SIS 651. And the maximum CPU that this will support is a 3.06 gigahertz Pentium 4 uh, with 533 front side bus and 512 meg cache. So it has to be a Northwood based Pentium 4. But uh, I mean, that's pretty powerful for a Windows 98 system. So now when you're thinking about Windows XP, there's a lot more compatibility. It's been around forever and there's just plenty of different ways you can go. But if you want to build the most powerful Windows XP system possible, you want a Z77 motherboard. And honestly, this one right here by Asus, I feel is probably the best for a few reasons. Okay, so the P8Z77-VLX. The reason why I say this is probably the best is because three PCI slots and two PCI Express slots. Reason why the PCI slots are important is because if you do want to run an older Voodoo card with, let's say, I don't know, the most powerful Windows XP GPU you can use is actually a Titan X Maxwell. You can modify the uh, GTX 960 Windows XP drivers to work with Maxwell Titans or a 980 Ti or what I was using was my GTX 970. So you can have a GTX 970, a PCI Voodoo 3, Voodoo 4, or Voodoo 5 video card for retro gaming. Uh, you can go ahead and throw in a second video card in here. And then with one of these other PCI slots, put in a uh, Sound Blaster 16 PCI card or something like that. And that'll give you the compatibility you want with older titles. Now, this board, I think, is probably the best overall way you could possibly go. I mean, if you wanted to cheap out or if you couldn't find, uh, like, a Voodoo 3 in PCI or 4 or 5, those are very tough to find. You can, you can actually SLI Voodoo 2 cards down here on these bottom two slots, put your Sound Blaster in this PCI slot, and then still put in, like, a GTX 970 or 980 in here. Now, you have a machine that will run high-end Windows 10 stuff, and you can also boot into Windows XP and go ahead and run your older titles perfectly. Uh, I mean, there's a few issues with a couple of really old DOS games, and honestly, on a system like this, you're probably going to want to use DOSBox for DOS-based games, but early Windows games will run on Windows XP very well. Uh, so this will pretty much get you from about 1995, 1996, all the way until today. So I think that this is the most complete platform that you can probably go with. Now these are a little bit expensive, these boards on eBay, they're about $110, which granted is not a lot for a Z77 when they were new, but these are used. Now this one right here, seller refurbished, they've had these up here for a while. These are only $65. It's an Intel board. 
Uh, it's their DZ77SL-50K. Once again, you have three PCI slots, which is cool, but you only have one PCI Express slot, and uh, what's, I mean, there's not really any negative about that, uh, but my big thing is over here on the SATAs, there's only four SATA ports. I don't really like the location of the USB 3. Everything else about the board's layout is pretty good. For the price, I feel it's worth the sacrifice if you're trying to do this on a lower budget. Now, what CPU you pair with this, it almost doesn't matter, especially if you're going to be gaming a lot in Windows XP. I mean, a Core i5 would be way, way more than enough. You could probably get away with an i3, but uh, if you really want to max it out, go ahead and throw on a 3770K or a 2600K, and uh, then you have a perfectly capable PC for now, and you can play most of your retro games. Well, alrighty guys, this is a little bit different. I just wanted to try this video, see what you guys think, and uh, hopefully that helps some of you guys out. Uh, I do have some of the hardware on hand. You guys know me. I can't really just do all this research and not go, well, I want to test it. So I do have some stuff coming in, and I will get to that. I will be going on vacation next week, so I won't be here for that. That's why I wanted to get this video out this week uh, on my days off, so this way you guys can go ahead and give me your feedback. So this way we can see what we need to do. I do have desk lamps coming in. I know things are a little bit dark and I'm using, you know, the sunlight to try to help out in here. So that's coming in. I'm also using, obviously, uh, just a regular microphone. I do have a lapel microphone coming in here soon. And that will hopefully, you know, bring the audio quality up a little bit better. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We're still working on the logos and getting a few other things in the works. But... By the time I get back, I would hope that we're pretty much ready to go and we'll, we'll start on our weekly update video and we'll continue to do stuff like this and other informative videos that may be helpful for you guys. So alrighty guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. That's super, super helpful for us, especially at a time like this when we're trying to rebrand and rebuild. So this would be really great. And uh, yeah, just keep on watching and we'll get you guys in the next video.